Oliver, and I use he, him pronouns. Hi, I'm Julia Caserta. I use she, her pronouns. Hi, I'm Sophia. Steve is a nickname, so if that comes up, that's my name. I also use she, her pronouns. Today we'll be, we will be starting off with coming out stories, if comfortable. Julia, you should Who? tell us your story if you want I to. will do that. My story, that's a fun topic, isn't <clears throat> it? Coming out, something every queer person dreads. Even if you got a good family, you still dread it. It's just a part of it. My coming out was less than ideal. We can say it like that. Uh, the first time, I, ca I came out at like different times for each person officially. So I, I came out to my mom first, officially. And that was at a really bad time. Because we were driving home. We went to get food. We were driving home. And I turned to her. Steve, my mom. I turned to her. <laughs> and I was like, Mom, I'm bisexual, by the way. Hmm. And that was exactly her reaction. Yep. And she just laughed. And, I, and after that, after I turned to her, I just went back to the window, you're the window. I went back and I was like, nope, we're gonna hide now. And I just didn't say anything for the rest of the car ride. She didn't either, it was me coming out, her laughing, nothing. And it's just silence. And I just wanted to get out of there. And obviously I couldn't, because I can't jump out of a moving car. I mean, I could. It's not recommended. It, 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 I don't think doctors re recommend jumping out of a moving car. I don't, yeah, don't do that. So, oh, it was so awkward. And then my sister, well, then after I told my mom I was bisexual, she had told my father. And obviously I didn't want that because I was going to, my plan was to tell her, gauge her reaction, and then from there build upon what I was going to do. So like figure out from her reaction if I should tell my dad, if I should tell my sister, if I should tell my less immediate family. I didn't exactly have that choice because it was kind of my fault because I, I should have thought about it like, yeah, they're a unit. They're going to talk to each other. They're going to talk about their children. That's what, that's their whole thing. They got children together. They got to converse. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, and then I asked my dad because I had the feeling that my mom had told him and I asked my dad. And he was like, oh, yeah, your mom told me, but I already knew. <laughs> How? How did you know? And I don't actually know how he knew. Apparently, a, a feeling, maybe? I don't know. And I never formally came out to my sister, either. That was more awkward, if possible. So, I had... A while before I came out to my mom, officially, I wrote down a uh, on a sheet of paper the different sexualities and like tried them out. So I wrote down like, Dad, I'm bisexual. Dad, I'm pansexual. Dad, I'm gay. I I didn't really know what I was gonna call myself. So I had written that out and then I put it in my bag because I was at my dad's and I had to bring it over back to my mom's. So um, my sister, I don't, I forgot about the paper. I was doing in the bag. My sister needed to use my bag for something. And she dumped out the bag on her floor, used it, and when she came back, she saw the little paper on the floor, she picked it up, unfolded it, I assume read it, walked into my room and held it up and said, Jules, do you need to talk about something? And I said, no. And then I believe what she said afterwards was, it's okay, I thought I was pansexual too for a while. See, as I don't think, I kind of know. I didn't say that. Afterwards, I just kind of pushed her out and told and just forgot about it. I, I wasn't going to deal with it. I just left it. That was my coming out to my immediate family. And I have more family to come out to. So, go into that. It's even more exciting and more awkward. Because I can always make things more awkward, can I? That coming out story, I had to come out to my grandmother and grandfather. We went to a dinner with them, me, my dad, my sister, my mom, my, and my grandmother and grandfather. 
So I was my grandmother asked me, how's school been? What are you doing? I went into talking about a little bit about the GSA, and I don't remember exactly how it came up, but I think I looked over to my mom, because I had asked her a few days prior, prior about coming out to them. I looked over to my mom, she nodded, and I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing this. So I said, I'm attracted to girls and guys, and my grandfather was fairly silent during that, but my grandmother had a few words to say about it. I believe her first reaction was, yeah, I can see an attractive girl walking down the street and think she's attractive. Any woman can. Uh, no, not exactly how I'm feeling. I actually am, like, attracted to the girl. So I had to explain that, which was weird to explain the different kinds of attraction to your grandmother. And afterwards, I think my, my grandmother looked at me. She'd been talking to my mom because my mom was trying to explain my sexuality to my grandmother. And she looked over at me, my grandmother, and she said, I don't want you to feel like you're forced into being queer. What? <laughs> That's, it's like one of the most accepting communities. What do you mean I'm being forced into being queer? I'm being forced into being straight kind of backwards when you think about it. And, and my mother, I don't remember what led up to her saying this, but she said, Julia is, and I quote, boy crazy. No? Not, not really, no. Even prior, I was not someone who was like romantic in general. I. Nor should you be. Nor should I be, because I was like 12, 13, I don't remember. And to say I'm boy crazy when I'm coming out as queer, uh, what? I just, it just baffled me and I was just silent and I was like, okay, thanks for coming out for me, mom. And then we left. So, wow. I come from a family of awkward people. Relatable. <laughs> relatable. I know. That's so relatable. Would you prefer to go, or would you like me to go? Uh, I just want to cover maybe a few, like, tips to, uh, <laughs> to learn avoid from my situation. that experience. <clears throat> yeah, so I think that timing is a very important thing when you're coming out or in any um, situation where you're telling someone important news. And um, so it's good to find a time where the person is in sort of the right mood, um, if you can, uh, <laughs> to tell them. and probably in a place where you have somewhere to sort of escape. Run. So Just maybe run not in a car no. is probably better if you're in your house or somewhere where you can leave the room and give them time to think or um, leave and have your own space if it's awkward. Um, so I think those are definitely a couple things to learn from that. Yeah, I also think it would be best, honestly, to just come out all at once. Yeah, because, like, how, what happened is I ended up being outed because I didn't come out all at once. So if I had just sat everyone down in my immediate family, it would have been a lot easier because I wouldn't have to have gone through separate awkward experiences, just one big one. Yeah. It's always going to be awkward, that's <laughs> one thing. It's like, no matter what, it's going to be awkward and uncomfortable, even if you have kind of an accepting family. They see you one way, and then you're like, I'm actually this. For anything, it's awkward. I think, um... That's also something like allies should think about a lot, that someone should never be forced into coming out. And if someone comes out to you, you should always ask them um, who it's okay to tell or if it's okay to tell anyone at all. Um, because being outed can be dangerous and certainly awkward and probably puts you in positions you don't want to be in. So definitely if you're an ally or just anyone, if someone comes out to you, um, as anything at all, just make sure to communicate with them about who they've already told and who you should tell. Mm -hmm. That's definitely important. I agree. Yeah, and I also think uh, for allies or anyone that is having someone come out to them, know how hard it is to just say it out loud. Mm -hmm. Like how hard it was for me to say I'm bisexual, even though I'm not bisexual. And it just like the courage that it takes to build up, and then also without it to have that choice taken away from you, 
when it's meant to be your choice, who you come out to, where, when, all of that. That's meant to be what your decision, because it's your life and who you want to share it with. Mm -hmm. And then to have that kind of ripped from you is like a horrible feeling. It's painful. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, it's literally like something was ripped out of you when you didn't want it to be. Yeah, I mean, what you guys are saying is like, it just really it makes a lot of sense, I think, and it really does kind of really like one of the most important things is where and when you do it yeah it's just the matter of like feeling comfortable when you do it and like feeling like you're ready to do it it's all it's like it's about how you're feeling about the situations uh -huh. and or I, whatever it may be that you're nervous or unsure about yeah um uh I'm going to jump back to stories of coming out Before really quick. Before you do that, can I add one quick thing? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So when I came out, I did it very suddenly and abruptly, and I didn't think about anybody's feelings but my own, which is can be good where it's like you – because you have to think of yourself every once in a while, but it's also not so good because you have to have a healthy balance for it. Like you need to – do it in a way that's not just so like abrupt and almost aggressive because like cause it's, it's 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 hard for parents again to hear that their that their kid is what something that they thought like you think of your kid as one way turns out they're not and you have a future planned out for your kid so it's you also like especially when you come out to parents you do have to take their feelings into consideration, which is something that I didn't do when I came out abruptly. I was like, this is me, this is who I am. If you don't like it, deal with it. And my family didn't deserve that. They cared about me. They didn't deserve to just have me come out so randomly and abruptly. I think that's a good point, but um, it's also, it's it's very good to consider other people's feelings, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, also it's about very you. important to remember that coming out is about you and their feelings, while they are valid, are not something that should interfere with you or your identity or your coming out. Yeah. So don't think too much about what other people think mm -hmm. when you're coming out. Um, although you do have to make sure you're not putting yourself in a dangerous situation anyway. Yeah. But it's good to remember that it's about you and that they can't, they shouldn't be able to have any effect on that. Yeah. Do you want to go into stories? Um, if you guys are cool with that. Yeah. Um, I, I would. I'm gonna say I. I feel lucky that it went the way it did, because I know there's a lot of m there's many much worse situations. And um, I actually I've only like told, like in my immediate family, like face to face, like did it come up? I've told like one person <coughs> and then other times they just ask me <laughs> and um, they're like it was actually before I was gonna come uh, film the first episode of this show that I was in um, my grandparents who I live with right now um, are they were like so just like a heads up are you going to come out as anything on this show? Like, are you going to come out as, like, um, trans or uh, bisexual or lesbian? And I'm like, no. And then I walked away. <laughs> Awkward smile. <laughs> and then I came back. And then I was like, hey. <laughs> um, More finger guns. Yeah, yep, yep. Bring up my awkwardness again. <laughs> um, Sorry. No, I, it's my doing. Um, but then I was like, oh, hey, yeah. Um, I'm a little bit gay. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little gay. <laughs> Just wanted to give you a heads up there. Yeah, that's... I lied. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other person, I... I like to talk about what I'm doing like these shows and GSA and things like that like I love to talk about that stuff like it's my favorite and then I I'm surprised I wasn't asked this sooner like 
I, I was it. <laughs> somewhat immediate family. Uh, I was with that so person a few weeks ago. And um, I, w I, you were, I was talking about Youth Leadership Day. And um, it, it, I, I was just, um, we were just talking. And they said, they were like, so don't mind me asking. And they, they just went on and like, it was really nice to just feel it, like, because they were okay with it. They were just wondering. And I felt like it was, I kind of hesitated at first, but then I was kind of o more okay with it. Um, towards the end of the conversation. And then, so that's, that's, uh, immediate family, which consists of my grandparents, one parental, <laughs> and, um, another thing. Um, <laughs> thing? Yeah. Then there's, um, uh, the other side of my family. I mean, I'll just say it right now. That was, I, my mom knows. My dad does not know. He lives uh, across the country. Um, he's cool with it. He's a pretty cool cat in terms of those <laughs> things. So, but I, he just, he talks. He does. He tells my, his mother everything. Like, tells his girlfriend a lot of things. Not that I'm not cool with her knowing, but... I don't know how she feels about that stuff. And I mean, my his mother is also, she's cool with it. But it's her husband who I'm personally, like, really nervous for the time that that comes to have to, or if I feel comfortable telling them, because I know that he will just reject the whole idea. Like, he's not cool with that stuff. Like, I've talked with him, or I'd just be talking to my, fa like, other family members about it, and he'll just say these rude and unnecessary remarks about it, and, like, it's just not okay. Like, so I am a little bit nervous to kind of come out to that side of my family because of him. I know I shouldn't be scared of one, say, being, but I don't want that to separate me from the rest of my family. I didn't mean to ramble on. I just wanted to put that out there. But anyways, it could be a lot yeah. worse, and I'm okay with the situation. I mean, yeah, things could always be worse. That doesn't invalidate what's happening to other, like you or other people. Like, even though you're not in an entirely homophobic family, there, it's still sucks for lack of a better word it absolutely sucks to mm -hmm. be afraid of your family members that's something that no one should have to go through yet it's really common yeah. to be afraid of members of your family and be afraid of what they have to say about you when and what all of us said people shouldn't affect your ability to be yourself but they still do people still feel like family especially they feel like they have a stake in your life when some may, like your parents, yeah, they raise you, they have a say in your life, but like, ever, no one else really does. Like, yeah. you get to choose who you surround yourself mm -hmm. with, and you, you get to choose your own life, and you get to choose your identity, and how you feel, and all of that. Well, you don't have to choose how you feel. Yeah, it's just, with, like, that side of the family, they're, like, ridiculously conservative, and so it's different. It's way different than, like, thinking about it, like, how it should be but and yes I can surround myself with who I want to it's just like it's when you have these people who you know will not want you for who you are really really kind of sucks because you know that you just can't say anything because it's also not that it would affect my safety but it could affect someone else's safety. Like, if someone was in a similar situation where they just, like, they didn't feel safe coming out. It, that's a big thing. That's, but, like, yeah, that's not what I'm going through. It's just that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, total rejection is a fear of 
probably everyone that I can think of, like just anyone in general, but especially when you're coming out, it's just, it's overwhelming. It's just, yeah. anyways, and, I, I'll yeah. let that one And rest. what you said about Deirdre, it might suck. Again, for lack of a better word, it sucks to, to know that if you come out, you're in danger. That's when you don't come out. No matter, how, like, you hate to have to keep something inside of you. Because you, like, when you realize it, it's a fantastic feeling. And you almost want people to know. Because you can be, you can just let it out. Because you kept it inside of you for so long. But if it's going to put you in a place where you are in danger and your safety is compromised, keep it in. It's horrible. Until you can get away from yes, it. Yes, but your safety needs to come first. And always yeah always like if you are in danger don't come out if you're fa if you know your family will reject you kick you out do worse things they can do worse things don't say anything yeah. just it be that silent kid yeah. maybe find someone you can trust and talk to someone yes, that's what i was gonna say like yeah. just people that you just surround yourself with the good people that when you can either don't care like what your sexuality may be they're just looking for you like, yeah. it's you. It's not your sexuality. It's not your, like, it's just your personality. That's all you have to, like, just find those people. And that's something you see a lot, yeah. actually, where people are defined by their sexuality. Yeah. Like, in media, too, it's like, oh, this character's gay. You happy now? LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, they like, don't give them any personality <laughs> yeah. whatsoever. It's just, like, oh, just they're the gay. Band. That's the whole personality. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. all you got. Yeah. There you go. That's yes. it. Yeah. It's like, there's more to us. You know, we have personalities and feelings and all that. We're not just gay. It's just, there's, <laughs> there's more. Yeah. I think that uh, sexuality and gender is definitely like a great way to express yourself and it's a very important part of your identity. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, it shouldn't affect how you're treated in any way. And, um, it shouldn't affect how your family feels about you. Yeah. It shouldn't define you. Um, mm -hmm and you can express it and be proud of it, and that's great. But at the same time, it's not so great to be, you know, just like the token trans kid walking down the street, like, oh, yeah, that's the trans kid, or that's the gay kid, or that, whatever it is. You see that in school, too. Yeah, you and just it, become it's something where um, a lot of, like, straight cis people think of it as, like, you know, we're accepting them, or we're, like, admitting that, oh, we have, you know, like, oh, an LGBTQ exist. person in our school community. Isn't that great? But they don't actually go and talk to the people. They don't um, fully acknowledge that they're people, not just labels and not just, you know, something you can put in, um, you know, the description of your school website. Oh, yeah, we're inclusive of the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. so like You're not inclusive unless you appreciate the people for everything rather than just the fact that they're part of a certain group mm -hmm. and that goes for everything i told that's a great point i really think that was yeah so going back to coming out story for all of us if yeah. you're comfortable if yeah. totally. I'm, like I'm gonna safe space. um we'll be having hopefully um in the near ish future a trans specific episode mm -hmm. of the show where i have some other um trans guests with me hopefully so, next month yeah I think uh, that would be a great time to go into coming out because it's okay. um, yeah. it's very different. Like coming out as trans, yeah. it's yeah. you know similar experience, but at the same time, it would be difficult to go into that without yeah. talking about you know yeah. how to be a trans ally and all that. So I think that would be a great thing to talk like about on the next show. As trans, almost harder than it's coming out as a sexuality. Well, it's something that um, I think if you're like, if you come out as, you know, gay, your parents can say, you know, oh, you're not really gay. Mm. And that's, you know, that sucks. That really sucks. But at the same time, um, that, I mean, it might affect how you express yourself, but you can still be gay and be, you know, like, well, if you come out as trans and your family rejects you, you can't make any changes to yourself or your name or anything like that. And so that affects you a lot in terms of, like, self-confidence and dysphoria and all that, which is also something we'll go into in the next episode. But it's definitely a different experience 
not to say it's necessarily worse or that it can't be completely awful to come out as, um, like, come out with your sexuality, but uh, it's uh -huh. definitely a different thing. And I think we've talked a lot about the bad parts of coming out, but, uh, like, what Sophia said, we're, we're in a pretty good place. Like, we're lucky to be able to be this, this way. But there also are some really good aspects of coming out, because, like, it's freeing. It's just, like, you get it off your chest, and it's, like, th there's this moment before anything happens, and you just set it, and it's, like, pause in, like, time where it, you feel amazing because you set it. It's out there. It's that people heard it. You're out in the, it's out in the world. And then people open up their mouths, and it gets a lot worse. But in that just, like, split second where you're just nothing has affected you yet, it's just this best feeling of pure bliss yeah. in my experience at least because it's like here you are world do with it what you please and then that's comes me. the reaction and then yeah. comes the reactions <laughs> which we covered which suck and yeah. it's not good yeah. but also um i mean that sort of getting it off your chest is great and um even though their initial reactions might not be what you expected or might not be great um that doesn't mean your chances at being accepted in your family or wherever it is are ruined. And a lot of people are just uneducated or um, mm -hmm. they speak really quickly because they're shocked or they say something they don't mean or they just or don't talk. They don't, they don't understand what you're saying. Um, so a lot of the time it's just really important to make sure you're giving people resources and it's not your job to educate them, but they might come to you with questions anyway and it's good to... Um, it's good for allies too to make sure mm -hmm. just that you're educated and that you understand and do research if someone comes out to you because um, that definitely helps mm -hmm. to be more accepting. So and yeah, what you said about it's not your job to educate them. I was at a family dinner, so many family dinners in this episode. I was at a family dinner and um, we got on the topic of uh, sexualities and all of that, and then people were just coming at me with a thousand questions and so much and they just expect me to know everything and I'm like guys I've been a part of the GSA for like a few months I don't know everything and it was just so many questions and they weren't almost they weren't even like posed nicely like if you pose if you say the questions nicely it's not as bad but in my household questions are asked through screaming and very loudly and very loudly and not the best way so it's just this overwhelming feeling and like it's not your j and like like you said about we said about being labeled I was in that moment I was labeled as the queer kid I was the one who was supposed to know everything I don't know anything I know very little about this community and like if I said something wrong that could change their whole outlook on it and it's just terrifying <coughs> because but people didn't get that you can find better resources than just a 13 year old kid. And it's like, it's not our, it's not my job as the one queer kid in our family yeah. to explain to you everything. I don't know everything. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not trying to like rush us along. Yeah. We need to cover um, some more things just really quickly. <laughs> we can always come back if we have time. Um, so um, Oliver, if you're cool, like just do you want to give us just a little bit about the Trevor Project? Right, yes. So I have to admit, I don't know a whole lot about the project, but we'll probably um, go into detail about that another time. Um, we're hoping to have like um, a suicide specific episode um, later, but we just wanted to read off a few uh, phone numbers for you so that uh, if you're questioning your sexuality or um, have questions about your gender, just anything like that, um, there's a number you can text with questions and um, just any problem you might be having. This is not like an emergency number, the one I'm reading. So uh, if you're having an emergency, this isn't the one to text. But uh, the text line is 724-888-7277. And Steve has the other one. Yes, and if for immediate help, I'm pretty sure this is the line you can call. It's 866 488-7386.
And I think we'll have that number. That is the suicide prevention one? No, that, that, or, uh, that's not the national hotline. The national hotline is 1-800-273-8255. And suicide can't oh. be an option. I'm just, we just can't have that. It should so be so common. It's so common. It's just this number is like life saving. So even if you're just hearing about someone who's having issues or contemplating, call. It's there for a reason. So not going to get into a huge discussion, but just that, that's important. Yeah, it, it, like, it doesn't also have to be if you're contemplating suicide. It can be if someone you know is contemplating exactly. suicide. Exactly, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's what you were talking about. Yep. And also, just a small thing here about that. If you are feeling depressed or, like, you don't want to live anymore, I've dealt with things like that where I just felt like, oh, I'm just being dramatic. I'll get over it. I'm just being a teenager. Don't feel like you're being dramatic. Just text the number. They don't, it, there's no judgment there because they it's it's for you it's for it's, you to get help yeah on like even if you emergency. don't think you need it but like that thought just crosses your mind you can still just like shoot someone a text mm-hmm. and be like it doesn't hey. have to be like um a situation like, oh, where you're I'm gonna do it now it's yeah just like i'm yeah you don't have I'm to right. be you don't have to be in a situation like where you don't call until you're very sure you're going to commit suicide it's exactly. something that if it's if you're thinking about it or if it's something like your friend is thinking about or just whatever it is it doesn't have to be like you don't you shouldn't wait to call so if you're thinking about calling or texting just um, do it rather than waiting yeah and um, it's like don't always wait until the last moment like they were saying because sometimes like it takes a little bit of time to get relief or help or something like if you're feeling not immediate if you're worried yeah if you're worried about your safety like call after you like are really having some like and you just don't feel like you want to go to anyone it's just i mean do what you need to do not that's suicide don't do that yeah no don't do that no Bad idea. Absolutely not. Um, but go to someone if you can before you call, because yeah. that's for absolute emergencies. But if you're just feeling down or just feeling like you could, maybe talk to someone first. And if you just need instant relief, that's what the numbers for. And I think we can get more to this about specific yes, episodes. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'm just gonna ask them really quick. Nowadays, suicide has become so common that it's glorified. And you will see kids online just being like, oh, my God, I'm going to kill myself. And you can't tell if they're being serious or not. It could be a joke. It could be a joke. Like, I hear kids in class saying, like, ugh, I want to kill myself. And I'm like, should I be worried? Mm-hmm. And they're just like, no. And I'm like, then why did you say it? It's not a funny topic. And, like, you'll see shows, like, not to, to bring an example, 13 Reasons Why. <laughs> they glorified suicide in that. They showed graphic, descri- ex- like, things of suicide. And they almost, like, literally gave you a step-by-step on how to commit suicide. Not, not a, I mean, it's a it's good become, show. It's a good show, but suicide has become so glorified now it's just that it's not. kids see it and they're like, oh, yeah, you can do that. Just It's basically just giving tips. Like, no, absolutely yeah. not. And you'll find the weirdest things about suicide are blind and like the darkest things. And it, when you see that kind of stuff and you're thinking about committing suicide, mm-hmm. that doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah, it's play-by-play play or anything about it. You just don't want to... You just, it should, I don't, ah, I'm sorry, I can't form words right You're now. Good. Okay, I mean, if, I think we should save that, because yeah. I think that's a great topic for an episode, so I think the plan is for, in two months, it'll probably be Keep an coming eye at you, but I think what we should kind of try and fit a little bit about now um, is kind of, like, kind of mixed kind of topic but like reactions to coming out and the it's just a phase issue Ooh, that's a fun sentence yep um, I feel like I'm sorry I'm gonna no, interrupt no. you for a minute I feel like everyone any queer person has once in their life heard some version of that it may mm-hmm. not be directly it's just a phase 
but it's there. Yeah, and um, it's, I think what we should kind of talk about is like, A, if, it, if you like your thoughts on it, and then like other things, like if you have like stories or anything like of either like seeing it or, but whatever you guys want to do. I just All think right. that might be well, a good Let's format. start with thoughts on it. So, yep. Oliver, thoughts yeah. on It's Just a Phase. So I personally hate that, and I hate when people say that, and I think um, it's just irrelevant, honestly. Um, I think it doesn't matter whether it's a phase or not, because if it is, parents and friends should be supporting people through their phases. As long as it's not harmful to that person or other people, it's not, it doesn't matter if it's a phase or not. So um, I think that if, that most of the time, kids who are trans or who are queer, when they come out, they mean it. And it's coming out is a big thing, as we talked about before. So um, you definitely wouldn't come out unless you're almost completely sure. So I think um, it's, that's not really, that's not the most sensitive good thing yeah. to say when someone comes out to you at all. Um, and that phases, if it is, um, lead to sort of realization and it's good to have um, sort of periods where you're exploring yourself or your identity or different terms or pronouns or whatever it is and that um, there are different stages along the way to realizing what labels or what terms or what fits with you best. And then, like I talked about before, how much courage it takes to become at coming out and then to be hit with, it's just a phase, you'll, you'll get, get over, over it. it yeah. yeah, you'll get over it is almost like soul crushing because like it's rude. What do you <laughs> mean it's just a thing? It's so rude. It's, it's literally not also like, it, it, like you may go through like a little like wit bubble, we'll say, of just being like, like exploring things. Experimenting. But it, if but someone okay. tells that's you fine. like what their gender is or like if they're telling you something, brand new information, like just don't. Just no. When just don't. Yeah, someone comes out to you, someone says the pronouns they want, someone says the sexuality they want, you respect that crap. Mm -hmm. It doesn't <laughs> matter if it's a phase. You respect what they said about their self and their identity. Because you, nobody knows your own identity better than you. So who are you to tell me it's just a phase? Yeah. Like, maybe it is. Who knows? Maybe it is, and that's fine. It's okay for it just to be a phase. But it doesn't matter if it's a phase. If I come out to you, respect it and respect me. Yeah, I think... Um People also ask kids to be sure and ask kids to pick labels. No kids and, sure. Um, or just people in general, regardless of age. And I've been asked several times, you know, do you think this is permanent? Which is something that <laughs> I think <laughs> is kind of a stupid question to yeah. ask, honestly, because um, I, I don't think, I, I have to admit that I don't know if, you know, what's permanent and what's not. I thought I was female for, you know, like more than a decade, and that wasn't permanent, even though I thought it was. That's but okay. everyone else accepted that as permanent. Exactly. So if, so I, th I don't think it's good to assume that something's permanent, but it's not good to assume that it's a phase either. I think you should just be open to anything and just be open to people changing their minds. It. Yeah, and I think if, if I'm sure, then you should be sure, and that goes for everything and um and if I'm not sure then respect that and just support support people whether they're sure or not yeah, you were talking about like is it permanent or are you sure I wasn't sure when I came out as bisexual I was wrong I use different terminology now no I yeah. wasn't sure no I might not ever be sure that doesn't that's fine that does not matter if I t say I come out to you as I come out to you as bisexual one day. The next day, I say, no, actually, I think I'm pansexual. The next day, no, I'm just queer. It doesn't matter if it's flip-flopping all over the place. That happens. It's just how you feel comfortable. Yeah, and, like, you can change the terminology you use. Yeah. Because, like, you might one day find something that fits you better <laughs> than what you were previously using. And some people take that, like, where I figured out that I was queer, I didn't want to say it because I people would think I was lying and that I'm doing self retention. Mm -hmm. But... It shouldn't be that way. You should be able to change terminology. Yeah, like, it shouldn't be such a big deal when someone 
uh, isn't sure and um, if someone comes out to you and then you know however much time later comes out to you as something different don't use that as an excuse to say something like see you know it is just a phase or you are just um, you're never sure of anything stuff like that it just that's not a fair thing to say and it puts us in a position uh, when you're asking if something's permanent that is kind of vulnerable if someone asks me is this permanent or are you sure and I say no they're not going to respect my pronouns or my identity and if I say that I am sure and then later I tell them I'm not or that I'm using a different term they're going to be confused so I think it's just mm -hmm. good to accept that things come in stages and it doesn't matter yeah and one thing that I do kind of find almost funny in a sense is that when I was straight people was people accepted that immediately they were like oh yeah mm -hmm. she's straight she's norms. sure she's positive just, that she's straight it's just social norms yeah it's like heteronormative it's, ah yeah. that bugs me yes. because straight is straight and cis are the default when in reality Personally, I think everyone, when they're born, pansexual. Then you come out as the specific genders you like. So that straight isn't the norm anymore. It's anything is the norm. Just queer is the norm. And then you could, from there, you could say, Mom, I'm only attracted to females. Mom, I'm only attracted to males. And just That way, yeah. it wouldn't be such, like, everyone would have to go through the coming out thing. Which yeah. I think would be good, because then everyone would get an understanding of it. Yeah, it's just like the expectation when you're born. It should be like, yeah. okay, you figure it out for yourself. Like, we're not going to talk to you about it, not going to influence your decisions. Force anything down your figure throat. Figure it out. Like, deal with it. Just, just deal. <laughs> go over there and deal with it. You're two. You can, you can do it. Good you're job. two. You can yeah. know what attraction is. Yeah. Just go play with the other little kids and figure yourself out. <laughs> just go eat the dirt. It's okay. Oh. okay. It builds your immune system. It builds your immune okay. system. Yeah, but I'm it. I think I I throw the stick. It was fun. I somewhat agree with what <laughs> I definitely agree that um, straight shouldn't be the norm. Straight and cis shouldn't be the norm. But that's just it. Just how I it is. Said. Like I know what I said. It's never gonna happen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think that's kind of idealistic, of course. But. Yeah. I'm not. Uh. You know when you said like, the norm should be pansexual and then you come out there as there shouldn't be a norm is what yeah I, I think I think they're um they're just it shouldn't be coming out shouldn't be a thing you shouldn't have to come out you should just be able to live your life without people assuming either way or asking you because it's private information and it's asking a lot for people to share that um and I think that it shouldn't be a big deal I think my kids should be able to just come up to me and say hey I'm using these pronouns now without it being a huge deal, and I'll just say, okay, okay how can I help? I think kids should be able to talk to their parents and just tell them whatever they're feeling yeah, without it being coming out. I think the biggest thing is just tip for parenting right here from a child. <laughs> Here's how you parent. Um, oh, God, what was I saying? Make it easy for your kids to talk to you. Just listen. Just yeah. Just you don't have to listen. say anything. You don't need. Just shut up. Let them talk. <laughs> just and like, cause like I think a lot of kids find it really hard to talk about their parents about anything. Mm -hmm. Like the sex talk. People find it hard to talk about that. That shouldn't <coughs> be a hard thing to talk about. Coming out shouldn't be a hard thing to talk about. Sexuality shouldn't be a hard thing to talk about. Especially with your parents, someone who is so close to you. You should be able to tell them everything hopefully. and anything. Hopefully, you should be able to discuss anything with your parents because they have the closest blood relationship to you, with to you that anyone will have. <coughs> yeah, that's, your child, that's I don't know. definitely a good Just tip. Your kids talk I to feel you. strange giving tips to parents because I'm 13. <laughs> We're all like 13 year olds, like, but, here's how you parent. But at the same time, it's also just about being an ally and um, I think it's okay. I don't, I don't want to run parents' lives, but I do think <laughs> it's okay for kids to be telling their parents how to have a better relationship because it should be something where you give each other feedback and say, hey, I think we need to talk about this more. And it's great to be open, but um, also kids should have a right to their privacy. Like Steve, you were saying um, people asked you whether you were queer, which is Probably something they were the cool. They, they yeah. were just yeah. like straight out with it. They were but just like <laughs> kind of hinting at it, but like, so we're like being are rude. you gay? Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel so. like I also feel like with my coming out experience, how I just relate it back to you guys. 
I might have made it dramatic. Because, like, I didn't know from my parents' perspective. They might be like, oh, yeah, she came out. And then to me, it's, like, so crushing. And it's just, I'm probably being insanely dramatic right now. But just, that's how it feels in the moment. It feels like, feels oh, like Lord, a big thing. when they do. It's like you almost just want it, like, if you're, like, confident going into it then you're just like, like deflated oh <laughs> it's, like, it's like a balloon fizzling out yeah it's just not it, it's like roller coaster of emotions this is what a roller coaster yeah, looks it like is. yep yeah it's totally what it looks that like that looks like an octopus but oh, okay okay that works too an octopus of emotions mm-hmm. there you go so many levels <laughs> so many tentacles okay and we're moving <laughs> 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 i mean we can talk about octopi I mean, that, I'm down, honestly. It's gay octopus. G- octopus. Is that a thing? Uh, I, okay. I mean, probably. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> We're getting off together. topic. We digressed a lot. So, <laughs> we talked slightly about tips from allies and coming out. Yeah, I think. I know. I'm just saying, like, no, I think maybe I we should cover just a few of our, like, personal tips for allies Already. just in the topic of, like, coming out because then, there's a lot of yeah. things that allies should know from us and maybe we'll and then, and just sorry. cover part of it and then i think to end the episode we can just go with our takeaways on what we have like yeah. our main statements takeaways mm-hmm. how to, so personal tips for you um i would say just make sure that you have or that you try to have as positive a reaction as possible and make sure to praise the person and tell them like how much courage it does take for them to come out. Even if you're not sure exactly what that means or you need to ask them later, hey, what does that actually mean to be pansexual? You know, it's mm, still... Pass the kitchenware. Um, it's still... Yep. It's still something... Or goats. It's the question I got asked. Yeah, I, I think it's... <laughs> attracted to goats. Are you attracted to goats? That's what I got. Yeah. When you I still need to... pansexual, they were like, so you are attracted to goats? <laughs> okay. Anyway. What? <laughs> Anyway, like animals. Yeah, episode. you still need to be like supportive and um, just friendly, kind to the person, whether or not uh, you have a different thing to say later. Because initial reactions are very important, and um, it gives people a lot of confidence if you react positively. And it's okay to ask questions later. But that's one big tip. Um, I think also just don't bring up the it's just a phase topic in just any way. Just don't say anything. Um, but even, like, just be cautious yeah, of it. because as like, we discussed, yeah. like, it doesn't matter, and that's just an irrelevant point that you don't need to make. So, um, yeah, just be kind and supportive, and don't bring up the it's just a phase thing. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. So, tip for me, I guess, is, at least in my personal experience, you can ask questions mm-hmm. as long as you ask them in a respectful and kind manner. Yeah. Like don't over like don't drown them in questions about sexuality like, because you don't know I don't I didn't know how to answer like especially with sexuality or gender you don't know you don't know anything of it like teenager dumb is the part where you just don't know anything you don't ask questions mm-hmm. just don't just well you can't ask questions yeah just be just be kind awesome. about it and know that they might not have an answer yet and it's your turn be patient okay. be patient that's a good one yeah. Patience is key in these situations. Something I don't have. Uh, I mean, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Questionable. Um, no, you just sorry. <laughs> um, I, I think like just, just ha- if you have any things that you think or like may come off badly or like affect the person in some way. Just Don't save questions it. until a separate time when things aren't heated and frazzled and when you're hyped up on a dinner. Yeah, like island. yeah, like just wait to ask those questions. Like they may or may not have an answer. Just be ready for whatever may come at you. Just like be aware of like the ha- like like you guys have said like how hard it is and how like difficult it is to like work yourself up to that stuff and like. Just be cautious of, like, how it could bring someone down, even if you ask, like, a question that's not intended to be bad. Just just think about timing. Again, here comes timing. But, like, it's important. Okay. So, 
to end off the episode, why don't we do final statements and takeaways? Let's start back the line. Oliver. Okay. Um, I think probably one of my biggest takeaways is um, just to be, like, aware of other people's feelings as an ally. Um, and that when Even you're coming you out, ally, still be yeah, aware. yeah, when you're coming out, it's good to be aware of other people's feelings, but mainly just as an ally, be aware of what it's like to come out, um, even if you don't fully understand. So react well, be positive and supportive, and um, don't like belittle people by telling them um, it's just a phase or you're too young or anything like that. So I think that's my takeaway. My takeaway was just something that actually I said, um, respect people. It doesn't matter who they are, it doesn't matter what's going on, respect them, respect their opinions, and they'll respect you, hopefully. Um, just be cautious and plan out your stuff. <laughs> yes. What you're going to say, when you're going to do it, it's all about the plans. And, yeah, is there anything else? No, there's one oh, announcement okay. about, Oops, there's, sorry. um, I don't know if this will, this episode will come out in time for this to be effective, but there is a youth march on Saturday the 24th um, from 12 to 2 p.m. at the State House. So LGBTQ plus ally, whoever you are, just show up and give some support. Thank you so much for watching. This has been All Things LGBTQ plus youth, youth edition. edition, and we'll see you next month. Thank you.